Greetings, prop makers of the world. Today we're continuing on with The Room, and this week's edition is this buckler shield that's also a fantastic wall piece. It's about 22 inches across, and it's gonna be built so we can put something in the middle of it here, which will be next week. The tutorial is pretty straightforward, and you can change the shape of the shield. I did a buckler because I wanted it to be circular. But anyways, I hope you enjoy the tutorial and let me see your results when you're all finished. As you saw from the beginning of the video, we are making a shield today. This is going to be either a cosplay shield or a decor shield. You know, I'm using it as a decor shield as part of the room. And, but it can be used for a lot and the techniques that I use in this can be used in a lot. Now, what you're gonna have to do is you get a single mat. This could, this is uh, just your typical fitness mat. And then using the prop tutorial up there to make the, this, uh, I wanna say it's a compass. You wanna use it to set and make a 11 inch circle, a 10 and a half inch circle, which is off the bottom. 11 inch circle, 10 and a half inch circle, and a 10 inch circle. Now, what those are going to be is there is a layer of foam that comes over here that gives us a little bit of depth and it's what's going to be the metal banding around the outside of the shield. What you see here are the wooden planks that are going to be cut out and uh, textured when we're all finished here. Now, this here, this edge here is saying that is the edge of where the foam for the rim, the rim goes onto. This is where we're gonna be putting the texture to because I don't want the texture to end right at the edge of the uh, lie of the edge of the foam there because it looks noticeable. So I'm bringing it right back to about halfway between the two. You don't need the circle, but you can do it if you want. Now here, using a square, what I did is I put this at some point with the corner touching the center point of my shield. What this does is it just allows you to get right angles within the shield. So when you draw your pieces of wood, you can do it well. And uh, where is it here? So this, each of these, these are four inches. And what it does is you can make them smaller, you can make them bigger, but we're gonna be texturing these, but I want to have a larger groove on these bigger pieces here to start with the boards. Anyways, so what we're gonna do now is using a razor blade. Uh, let's see, pretty sharp there. Now, on these bigger lines here, you're going to start at a slight angle. You want to dig down a decent amount. And just on the one side of it, cut at a nice angle. If it's not perfect, that's fine. It adds character. You know my slogan. Okay, now the second one, let's see if I got enough depth here. See, this is what happens when you use a slightly dull knife. I can feel it, it's fighting me a bit. Okay. I'm just gonna show you the one. If it's gonna cooperate with me, it looks like it's going to, see? Come on, negotiate with me. Okay. So using the knife, what we're gonna do is the only the main boards are going to get this treatment. And see, it's complaining a bit because the end isn't cut out yet. Perfect. So you can see the depth there is going to be, this is the board separation. So what we're going to do, and if it waves a little bit, do it. This is not, it's an old shield. You don't want it to look absolutely pristine all the time. Well, then look at this. This side does almost look pristine. You can do this with a Dremel, but in many cases, I find that the knife is the easiest. This whole thing, believe it or not, gets done with a knife rather than a Dremel. We have to do some Dremel texture after, but I'll be back once I finish cutting all these in and we'll go over how to do the actual wood texture. I'll be back. As you see, we've got all of these uh, main board separations complete. It looks pretty good. And you can see that I didn't do it exactly perfect, except for that one, which I shouldn't have done perfect. Well, not perfect, but not as straight, because see how much more character it has when the board has got a bit of life to it. Now, this next step here is really the, one of the best tricks that I have 
for this uh, shield. You have the option of taking a pendant, so you can see over here how I've gone past to the second circle but not to the third circle. Make sure you do that. Now, wood grain, you can either do it straight after, or what you can do is you can kind of give yourself a bit of a guideline of where you want to go. Now, we do this in about four different passes, just because the technique that I use for doing wood texture is it's slick as heck, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, keep it, keep it wavy, put some knots in it here and there, and you want it to look believable. Now, when you're doing wood grain, make sure that you never cross the, when you're making a grain, don't make this go across because that is never happens in nature. And the human eye will pick that out in a moment. And the other thing is, is you don't want to do too many knots because your human eye will pick out that as well. What you want to do is actually, if you want to do it with tons of knots, it'll reflect our modern lumber that we get in the stores these days. Um, there we go. So we're just going to do a bit of a bigger eye here. There we go. So this is our roughed out first pass. Now this is the cool part. I'm gonna show you a neat little thing here before I forget. If you're working with a knife a lot, pick up one of these things. And what I do is at the edge, at the time when I finish each bit of uh, foam work, I use this just to hone the edge. It's just a speedy sharp. Um, I use this thing all the time. It's just a carbore, it's a carbide piece that just keeps your knife sharp. You can hone your blade, but I find that the bigger hones are harder to get into. This one is just so perfect for it. And it doesn't need a lot to keep your blade sharp. Now, on this, you have the option of setting your depth on your knife. I'm going to this depth. You can, if you don't have a knife like this, look at that, you can see, I, I buy everything retail. Um, if you use a knife like this, you just want about, what is that, maybe a quarter of an inch sticking out because you don't want to be too deep here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go onto your lines and just simple enough, you see I can't even see my line right now, but that's okay. We're going to go a bit longer just so I can see it. But if you have a knife that you can set the depth and you can see the blade, unlike me, then you can do this. Now what you want to do is you want to puncture the foam deep enough, but you don't want to go too deep. It's like I said, you want to go about a quarter of an inch down, and what you do is you just ride that through on your lines. If you haven't drawn lines, you know, you can just wing it. And the more you do this stuff, the more you'll find that it works like this. Now, I'm going to shut up now, and I'm just going to keep on going, and I'll be back after I'm finished. Okay, so, oh, look at that, I keep on saying okay, so. I do that all the time. I'm gonna have a t-shirt that says, okay, so. Now this is the fun part. What I'm going to do now is uh, see if I can get the camera over to there. Um, we return, and I've gone through and I've cut out all of, I've not cut out, I've just scored all of these lines on this whole thing. Now, what I did is when I was done, you just, in between these lines that you did, you could just do little, little stripes that match the coarse and grain of the actual item. You don't have to draw them, but you can go back after we're done this next step here and you can see exactly where we're going with this and how it turns out. Now you have the option of cutting this out, as you can see over here, to the circle, but I keep it as a full mat. It just makes it easier to work with. Now using, sadly, this is one of those cases where you need a heat gun. You can't do this one without this because this is the main trick on it. So. I'm going to go through and this is going to make a racket so I'm not going to talk anymore but you should see on the video what happens. Oh, there goes my camera. That's what happens when you got multiple cords going all over the place. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly force that bend out. As you can see, we go the heat. Pretty much all you're doing is, is you're forcing that heat to open up the grain. It works so well and it's so quickly. And when this is all done, this looks so nice and textured. And you know, right now we got a bit of a mess of everything going on with it. But you'll see that this adds a really nice look. Now, the one other thing we're going to do before we're all finished here, which I should have done before, really, um, is you take a Dremel and you just hit some of these areas just to rough up the surface just that little bit more because right now these boards are beautiful. They're um, perfectly smooth and we don't really want that. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to finish up uh, doing the heat on this and I'm going to hit the Dremel on a few spots, but I'll show you when I'm all done and we'll move on to the next step. We're all finished. So I used the heat gun on the rest of this to bring up the grain. And then I just went through and I hit some of the grains with the Dremel, added a few bumps where there wasn't. You can really skip the Dremel part. I just think it adds that little bit more believability when this is all done and painted. So the next step we're going to be going is we're going to be working on getting all of this side trim in. And uh, I have to get this cut out, so I'll be back when I have got those two things ready. When I come back, this is already going to be contact cemented, so you don't have to wait to watch it dry. Look at that. I almost went too far on that one. Anyways, I'll be back to go over putting on the trim and uh, getting this thing kind of sealed up before we start painting it. See you in a few. Perfect example of me getting ahead of myself. The fact is, I was trying to record me getting these strips on here. So, you have to ignore the bird in the background, who I left the door open so she can hear me going crazy. So what you do now is you just line up to the outside edge. Once your contact cement is on and ready to go. And then just feed this, make sure it doesn't touch beforehand, Sawin. And you just, pretty much straightforward. This is easy step. And then after we're gonna go through and we're going to do some cleanup on it and some chamfering to get it exactly the way we want it. But there you go. We're gonna do this all the way around and I'll be back after to talk about the next step. As you saw from that very uh, hastily done last segment, I glued these things on and holy man, this is a big area to be contacting cementing at once, but you know, just due to the case of the video, I have to do things a little bit differently than I normally would. Normally I'd do a small increment, glue it, small increment, glue it, but this time I want to do it all at once and yeah, it wasn't the best idea in the world because I almost, I, I know contact cement is pretty decent and lenient, but yeah. What I didn't mention is these pieces of foam are quarter inch by one inch. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, but the temp, what we've done so far is all set up for this. And you can see how the wood goes underneath the trim. It leads to the believability that it's there. I hate it when you stop there because you have to think about how this was constructed. This was built using wood planks and then the metal rim around it is holding it in place. And the bolts that we put in next will reflect that case is how things are all held together. But what we have to do now is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna dremel this edge to get it all smoothed out. And I'm gonna do some bezeling here like I did before where you just hit it. I'll show you when I come back on how, what happened there. I don't need to show you me doing it with the dremel because it's something you have to do yourself to understand how it goes. Use a junk piece. Anyways, so once you've got all those, once you've got all these beveled and done, hit this surface a couple times with the dremel to give it a bit of age. You'll see when I come back exactly what I did, but I won't talk anymore. I'll be back once I've got this segment done and we will talk about the rivets. All right, so I've returned. You can see I got a little bit of a gap where I rushed it and this contact cement opened up, but it will be noticeable for the most part. And this is where it's proper. You can see that I just went through. I beveled this back edge here. I beveled the top edge here and I beveled the inside edge here to give a very realistic looking metal banding. We're gonna go through next and we're gonna be putting in the rivets to get this all finished up. And um, I just wanted to show you where I was here because this is how everything works. I actually like to put, um, actually I'll put in the rivets next. I'll be right back. Alrighty then, we're back. So you can see here that I put these plastic gems on from the dollar store. These are fantastic. You know, there's actually a pattern that I took from there. 
And um, if you see these things, pick them up. They're so good. The stick on them is really good. And all I do is I put them on and then I take the uh, Dremel and I just smack it so I get rid of that beautiful faceted look. It works so well. Like it is such a quick outcome. Now regarding placement of these, these were actually to hold in the uh, the actual planks. So you can see here, each of these corresponds to this where, where uh, so look at that. thanks focus. Each of these corresponds to a center of a plank and that's what held it into the actual surround on the shield. Now, I'm gonna be going through uh, and I gotta seal all this, which I'm not going to show you. I'm just using um, the wood glue sealer that I've used before. Um, heck, I'm gonna do a short for that up there. And once we have that done, I'm going to go put a base coat on this. We're doing the inside first. Once we're done painting the inside, then we're going to go and do the outside, but we're gonna have to mask the inside when we're done. Anyways, I'll be back to show you how we do the painting on this after I have the base coat on. Be back. We're back, and we see we've got lots of paint on here. I'm deciding to do things a little bit different in explaining how I went about this. This step here, you can do whatever you want, depending on what color you want the shield and what you want to do with it. I'm going to give you what I'm doing, which is bringing this to the pattern of wood. Now, the first step is, I'm just trying to find my paint here. The base coat was this espresso, that's this here. So what you do is you paint the whole shield in espresso, which I did, and then I used a cashmere tat. All you need is a tone that's a little close to this. Now this next one here, just has the cashmere tan and the base coat. So as you go up, it's all additive. It worked out really well with slats because I could show you exactly how the aging process goes up and to make it look more realistic. Now, once you're done dry brushing the whole thing with that, I went to a burnt umber and I just did some details. You can skip this part. I'm not, I'm mixed on this in person. It looks really good. And I didn't like it just flat like this. It looked a little bit too unbelievable and some of my brush strokes came out, but that's okay. I don't care enough. And so the burnt umber goes here, and I did that. Then I took some raw umber, and I did some little uh, bits here and there, and along the edges now. You can see how this one has no edge, this one does. Once I've got the raw umber to the point that I liked it, and I put some down these gaps as well to darken it up a little bit. Once you've got to that point, you are literally to the final step, which is the black. And be careful with the black because it can really overwhelm quickly. I did a little bit more in the gaps and I did around the perimeter on top of the raw umber. And what it does, it just gives it a really weathered look. It ties the whole thing together. So now I get to go back and finish the rest of these to match that one. So it will look all finished. Next time I come back, I will also have spray painted this with just uh, I'll have spray painted this I'll show you the paint when I get back what I used you have to mask this out which is ugh, I hate masking but that's okay I brought it on myself anyways once I get this done I'll be back and I'll show you how this looks spray painted will go about aging up the iron outside edge I'm going with black to match the torches from the previous video and uh, I'll be back just one little quick addendum um, the color here will look a little bit different because I did a final coat of gel stain. This is golden pecan. You can get whatever color you want. And what I did is I just put a thin layer on here to pretty much darken up the board and uh, can make it a bit more consistent. I wasn't completely happy with how it looked, but such is the nature of props is it's always a work in progress and don't be afraid to make changes halfway through. So anyways, one last thing was the coat of gel stain, and now my whole house stinks of gel stain. Anyways, we'll be back for the black spray paint around the edge. And we arrive at the destination. So, what I have done is after spray painting this outside edge, I picked up some burnt umber and used it to age up the metal just a little bit, add some rust to it, and then I used some silver to add some accents. And if you look really closely, you can see both those colors are on there. Uh, masking this was fun, but I did a quick little video up there on how to do quick masking on circles, which is always convenient. 
And now the final step we're going to do here is depending on what you're using this for. If you're going to use this as a cosplay shield, you can pretty much do whatever you want and stick it right to this. Now what I'm doing is this is wall decor. So I'm going to be putting in two magnets on the back after drilling into the foam just a little bit. And what those magnets are going to do is it's going to give me a point where I can put whatever I want onto here and it'll just click on with the magnets. And um, I may do a video about that, but I may include it with the next video. Just know that if you're going to do it, how you back this is up to you. Um, some people want to put a piece of plywood on the back to give it a little bit more because this stuff likes to curve. It's just one of the downsides. Or if you can find like thin 1 8 inch plywood and then hot glue it onto the back of here or glue it however you choose, that'd be fantastic. Give it a little bit more strength. But anyways, that's where we are and you'll see at the beginning of the video how this looks up on the wall and look forward to the next video where I do the interchangeable centers on this because like I said, don't want have videos to end up too long. Anyways, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're feeling really generous, you can go and join my Patreon. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have a good one.